Hi, my name is Tracy Takahama Espinosa, and this is a video to give you a broad overview of our course uh, on applying mind brain education science to action research in your classrooms. Today, we want to give you a broad overview of the course. We want to introduce the teaching staff and we we'll talk a bit about the organizational structure of the course in each module. So, in this course, we have nine uh, main objectives. First, we want you to learn how researching can help you make better evidence-based decisions. And to do that, we want you to appreciate how asking the right kinds of questions can lead to better teaching outcomes, as well as learn how we can narrow down and identify and use keywords to conduct better searches uh, on Google Scholar to find evidence uh, and up-to-date information about the questions in our field. This in general then means that we're improving broader research skills and habituating ways of approaching problems in education in a way that you'll be able to use long after this course finishes. Another perhaps deeper uh, vision of this is to revisit uh, Bloom's taxonomy, understand these different levels of thinking of just recognizing or understanding information to being able to apply it then to get to this higher and more creative level where you're analyzing the information and coming up with something maybe new or different or a new way to approach the information. And we're also doing this within a core structure because while we will be doing a lot of accompaniment one-on-one, uh, -on -one, what we really hope to do is to have bi-weekly group meetings where we're able to share our progress and to celebrate each other's advances with these research steps as we resolve some of the bigger issues in our classrooms. We also realize you can get general information about action research for free in an online MOOC, for example. But this is a very different approach to learning research skills. We really want to personalize this learning experience to understand what are your specific needs in these areas and how do they apply to your specific problems in the classroom. And this also means habituating the documentation of information that we come across and learning about the tools you can use to organize and order all of the great information you come across. Finally, we want to return to this real joy. I mean, why are we all teachers in the first place? And I'd suggest that it's because we, we realize there's a lot to be done here and the students in our classrooms are all so unique and, and there's so much to learn about and there's so much to understand and apply from the learning sciences that we're just beginning to scratch the surface of approaching educational challenges with this lens. And so what we'd like to do is to make that enjoyable, fun, it should be a real kick to say, yeah, well, I'm learning and I'm loving what I'm doing. I love my profession. We hope that we can sustain that natural joy we have for the work that we do. We hope that over the course of the semester, we'll be able to nurture our own curiosities about the teaching process and, and learn to follow an organized process of inquiry and discovery where we'll be able to document and then use that information to become even better professionals. This means it'll be very clear exactly how we approach action research and we hope this leads to a greater pride in our teaching profession and especially appreciating the complexity of what goes on in the messiness of our classrooms and um, why research in the education field is so delicate and so complicated but also within our grasp. Every one of us can do it and we should all learn to do it in order to be better researcher practitioners. And we think this is true based on two big premises. The first is that we know that teachers do more experiments in a day than a neuroscientist will complete in a lifetime. The main difference is that uh, neuroscientists really regularly and meticulously document their whole practice, whereas we are on the fly all the time as teachers, trying to attend to multiple needs at the same time. This means it's clear that teachers know how to do research. What we don't do so well is document what we do. And those are some of the skill sets that we're going to be working on this semester. The second premise is that we believe that research should uh, you know, naturally emerge from your own natural curious space, right? And so the, we want you to choose a topic. It can be academic or it can be social emotionally driven, uh, but choose something that's of interest to you, something you want to know and will guide you in that research process. We do this basically through a gap analysis. Just figure out, you know, where am I right now and where is it I want to be? And then understand that gap, right? What do I need to do to fill in that gap so that I can actually get to where I want to be? Some examples of questions that can come up are that, you know, I want my students to read more for pleasure, or I want to personalize my instruction time, or I want to reduce bullying in my class, or to understand how the brain approaches math problems, for example. Or I want to employ a different kind of assessment. I want to evaluate product and process and progress throughout the school year, or I just want to understand the dyslexic brain. 
or I want to work with teens to help them become better decision makers. There are a myriad of ideas. Um, these are just scratching the surface. And you personally will drive the agenda of this class by deciding what it is that you want to know. Where is it that you want to be? So for those of you who've taken a class with us before, you know all of the modules have the exact same format. It's a flipped classroom with a synchronous meeting time, which means that you watch a video before you come to class. You're also asked to take a quiz, and you can take that as many times as you like. We really don't care. We just want you to really be sure you know all of the vocabulary and the key concepts of this particular unit, right? Then you should respond to a discussion board prompt um, that's related to the content topic of the week. And then you can dive into what we call bundles. These are mini libraries on each topic, and you can review as many as you like to get more in-depth knowledge about the topic of the week. Then you come to the class. So A, B, C, D, those are things that you do before you come to the live class. So that when we're in the live class together, we can really just pull that apart and see how it applies to your real life in your real classroom. So while we will have prompts in these live classes, what we're looking for is for you to come and get the answers you need to be able to advance your own research project. After we have the live class, you complete a 3-2-1 reflection, you know, three things you didn't know before we have the class, two things that you're curious about, and one thing you may change in your personal or private practice based on the information we shared. Uh, then, again, after the class, you can respond to the other learners on the discussion board, and if you want to, you can retake the quiz as many times as you like. So basically, every single one of those eight modules, which is spread out over 16 weeks, will have the exact same format. Because we realize you are busy people, there's a lot to do, and a lot of things that are in research have to be done more at a one-on-one -on -one level. The synchronous class with the entire group meets only for one hour every two weeks, although we will have multiple individual meetings scheduled with you throughout the semester as well. So every single module, they will have those things that we mentioned before, the quizzes, the discussion boards, and you'll be asked to submit pieces. You'll inch towards the completion of your project as we go along. I'll describe that in just a second. Um, and each of those pieces is graded and you get feedback along the way. You're asked to keep a documentation of this information in the ePortfolio that's on our platform in order to measure your progress and you can really see, you know, where did you start from? How did your ideas evolve? So that you can understand your own research process a little bit better. There'll be multiple formats to do this in. The assignments that we're asking you to do, but you can also do online journals or video documentation of your own progress. So who are we? I'm Tracy Tagama Espinosa. This is Cynthia Borja, who will be uh, working with me on this class. These are pictures of my own brain. Yes, I faked a sinus infection so I could actually see what my own brain looked like. So <laughs> basically, um, philosophically speaking, um, I believe that the first rule of education is the same as medicine, which is to do no harm. So this is why we firmly believe in evidence-based practice. So a lot of the things we do in classrooms, we do without actually understanding why they work or why they should work or if there's any evidence at all behind them. And that's part of the motivation for doing this course. I also think that the brain is pretty complicated and that's okay. We as teachers should actually own that and celebrate that and be proud of the fact that we work with the most complicated organism in the universe every single day. That's really cool, right? Uh, and finally, I hope this doesn't frustrate people in the class, but um, I don't think my job is to answer uh, lots of questions. I think uh, my job is to help you formulate better questions and answer them yourself. So we'll spend a lot of time doing a lot of Socratic dialogue, a lot of discussion back and forth about how to improve our practices, but hopefully it's guided and led by you in your own inquiry. So hopefully that's the positive way to approach this. Uh, my colleague Cynthia Borja, she used to be the Dean of Psychology at the University of the Americas in Quito, Ecuador. She did her undergraduate work in, in the States as well, Boston University and Capella. And she and I have been working very closely together uh, in connections over the past years, trying to motivate a better understanding of all of the learning sciences together. So as I mentioned, the structure of each module is very much the same, but what we'll be doing in each module is different, right? So the topic will be different. Um, very first week, we're going to have introductions, and then we're going to be talking about how to formulate a great research question by asking ourselves, you know, what do I want to know? Because if you have a great research question, everything else falls into place. Without a good research question, we're missing that north, and so the first step is to have is to develop that really strong research question. From there, after the research question, we want to explore the literature. And broadly speaking, this means the research that already exists, right? How can we stand on the shoulders of giants and of what is already established 
to know something new. The big idea here is not to rehash known material. The idea is to know what people already know. This is a hard and an easy stage of research because what it tells us really is sometimes the things we think are unknown are just not known by us. Maybe the answer does exist or people have researched it or know things and we just haven't uh, read broadly enough to know this. And so the key idea here is to learn how to identify existing literature in the areas or the problem areas that we're interested in. Then we'll talk about how you conduct action research, how do you structure these within a classroom setting, and really um, get down to the nitty gritty parts of it. Most of you really already know how to conduct action research. The complexity comes in with how do you uh, do that within the dynamics of your own classroom. So the big idea here is to talk about how to personalize that for your particular classroom structure. Then we'll look into this very big idea of analysis, which goes way beyond just knowing what other people said in the literature or what we found. Those things are just describing what exists, right? Analysis is taking it to that next level of understanding of, okay, so now, now that I have those puzzle pieces, I've put them all together, what is that telling me? Is that telling me a new story? Is the problem I thought I had actually a different kind of a problem? Okay, so we'll talk about the types of exercises we can do to reach that deeper level of thinking to be able to, you know, tell that story of what am I discovering now in my research process. Then we come to the conclusions. So now that I have this information from my analysis, what kinds of conclusions do I have? How can I answer my research question? And this leads to a really rich discussion. Now that I know this, what are the other things that are out there that I need to know to continue to, to build up my knowledge about this particular topic? Then we want to pull all of those different pieces together, and this is your whole research project as a whole. You know, how do each of these pieces now fit together? And this is also more complicated than it sounds because while each piece is really manageable on its own, the big idea of unifying them into a single project is to seeing how the question was born of the problem and how the literature search was born of the question and how your methodology responded to what we already know and how you analyzed what you found in the data gathered in the methodology and how you reach those conclusions. All of those pieces have to really be coherent and, and join together seamlessly. And that's what we'll look at when we talk about the project. And then we want to move from the project to your presentation. How can you share this information with other people? So as we know, one of the best ways to learn anything is to have a worked model. So let me give you an example. Let's just say that um, what I want to know is why my students don't read so much for pleasure. So I want to know how to increase the quantity and quality of reading that my students do in the class for pleasure, not things that I assign, okay? So I might generate a kind of a hypothesis. I think that students don't read for pleasure because they don't have access to literature they really like. So I might formulate a research question. How and to what extent does promoting free choice of what to read, increase the amount of reading that's done. Then I go to the literature, I'll go to my Google Scholar search, and I'll have to identify keywords based on my research question, keywords. I'll have to look at reading and pleasure or out of school time or free choice. I'll have to come up with certain topics and then plug that into the search and see what kinds of research has already been done on my topic. Then I go to design an action research project in my class. I'm thinking if my students can be the ones who can choose the type of literature they read, if I'm not limiting them just to the readers that I have in my little classroom library, but I can broaden this, for example, using technology, I can design an action research project in which I see if searches for literature increases by student use as they look for online literature that's available to them. And I can measure that both quantitatively by the amount of time they spent looking for the literature and how much time they actually spent reading, as well as uh, qualitatively. I can ask their opinions about how they feel about the literature that they chose. Um, I can design these measures and I can collect the data in my class. Then I can analyze it and reach some conclusions. Well, did it help to give them that free choice? Did they read more because of it? Maybe they read more, but they weren't happier. Or it, so maybe my question really should have been, how do I get them to be excited about reading rather than how do I get them to just read? So I can rethink once I've reached that conclusion. I can answer my research question and have this discussion about now that I know that this helps or doesn't help, um, what would I do next as far as resolving that particular problem that kids don't read for pleasure in my class? 
Um, I'll pull all of those different pieces together to create a single project. This would be a paper basically, but then I want to convert that into some kind of a presentation where I can share what I found with my colleagues, sort of to tell them, you know, within the context of our schools, it seems that this is one thing that I found in my class. And maybe to be able to compare and contrast your findings with what is happening in other classes and or to save other people the time of doing this research, you can share and say, well, actually, I found that free choice really does, you know, motivate extra reading, or it really doesn't, whatever the, the findings might be, so that you can help grow the knowledge base of your entire institution by sharing that in your presentation. So basically that's the gist of the course. We really look forward to digging deeper into all of these points when we see you in the live class. Thanks a lot.